Hello everyone. Welcome to edupediaworld.com and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. This is Vikas Patil. This is the 7th chapter of grade 9 Movements of Earth's crust that is intraplate movement. In this chapter we are going to explore in detail about the movements that occur within the tectonic plates and about earthquakes. This chapter has been divided into two subtopics faults and folds, earthquakes. We humans can never undermine the power of nature. Nature has given birth to life and it can destroy it as well. Time and again, nature reminds us of its enormous power. It tells us to show due respect to it. Several natural calamities disturb the life and cause enormous harm to property. Storms, cyclones, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, etc. are the evidences of the power of nature. It is not possible to stop them. However, we can only prepare ourselves to face them in a better manner. Among all the natural disasters, earthquakes are the most dangerous ones and rightfully called as the master of disaster. Understanding earthquakes can help us prepare for it. This is the first session of the chapter. In this session, we are going to learn about faults and folds. In this session, we are going to try and achieve the following objectives. Identify the forces acting within a lithospheric plate. Describe the effect of these forces. Define the terms faulting and folding. Analyze the movements that can occur along a fault. Illustrate two kinds of folds using a label diagram. Distinguish between different faults and folds. Explain the cause of simple and complex folds. Before we begin our exploration about faults and folds, let us look at some of the common misconceptions that exist regarding the same. First, all the cracks on the earth's surface are faults. Second, Earthquakes happen only near the plate boundaries. Third, faulting and folding cannot be found at the same place. The entire tectonic plate moves together in one direction. All these are myths, misconceptions. Let us look at the facts and explore them. When you think about enormous plates of lithosphere traveling around on the planet's surface, you can probably imagine that the process is not smooth. Most geological activities take place where two plates meet at plate boundaries. When plates are pushed or pulled, the rock is subjected to stress. Stress can cause a rock to change shape or to break. When a rock bends without breaking, it folds. When the rock breaks, it fractures. Mountain building and earthquakes are some of the responses rocks have to stress. Stress 
is the force applied to any object in geology stress is the force per unit area that is placed on a rock there can be four different types of stresses that can act on the rocks we all know that plates are not made up of single type of rock they are made up of rocks of different properties physical as well as chemical their composition is different their weight their mass their response to stress would also be different and therefore the speed with which plates move is not uniform across the plate rocks can undergo different types of stresses first is tension rocks that are being pulled apart are under tension tension causes rocks to lengthen or break apart tension is the major type of stress found at divergent plate boundaries second is compression compression is the stress that squeezes rocks together compression causes rocks to fold or fracture when cars driving around a parking lot collide compression causes the cars to crumple compression is the most common stress at the convergent plate boundaries third type of stress is called shear stress when forces act parallel to each other but in opposite direction the stress is called shear shear stress causes two planes of material to slide past each other this is the most common stress found at transform plate boundaries other than these three types of stress rocks can also be under stress due to one more reason a deeply buried rock is pushed down by the weight of all the material above it since the rock is trapped in a single spot it is as if the rock is being pushed in from all sides this pushing causes the rock to become compressed but it cannot deform because there is no place for it to move this is called confining stress if the amount of stress on a rock is greater than the rock's internal strength the rock bend elastically this type of change is called elastic because when the stress is eliminated the rock goes back to the original shape like a squeezed rubber ball if more stress is applied to the rock it will eventually bend plastically in this instance the rock bends but does not return to its original shape when the stress is removed if the stress continues the rock will fracture that is it breaks when a material changes shape it has undergone deformation deformed rocks are common in geologically active areas so bending of rocks creates folds while breaking of rocks give rise to faults as you can notice in the diagram the three types of stress that can act on the rocks are tension compression and shear the rocks respond either by bending and forming folds or by breaking and forming faults now all those cracks that are present on the surface of the earth's crust they're called fractures some of these fractures are joints where there is no relative movement but if there is relative movement then these fractures are known as faults faults are those fractures where some type of displacement has occurred there are three types of faults normal fault reverse or thrust fault and transform that is strike slip fault let us look at 
different types of faults one by one. If you observe this diagram, you can see a crack in the middle. This block is known as the hanging wall block since you can play a hangman here. While on the other side, this is known as the foot wall block. The relative movement of hanging wall and foot wall is different during in different faults. Let's look at the normal fault. In a normal fault, the hanging wall drops down relative to the foot wall. Normal faults are caused by tensional stress that pulls the, cr the crust apart, causing the hanging wall to slide down relative to the foot wall. When compression sequences the crust into a smaller space, the hanging wall pushes up relative to the foot wall. This creates a reverse fault. You can see normal fault in this graphic. Normal fault is a result of extension. Fault plane is visible in normal fault. As you can see, this is the hanging wall on the right side while on the left side we have the foot wall and the hanging wall has come down relative to the foot wall. When blocks of rock are subjected to compression, it will squeeze the blocks of rock into smaller space. Due to this, the hanging wall will push itself up relative to the foot wall. This creates a reverse fault. A type of reverse fault is called a thrust fault. At a thrust fault, the fault plane angles is nearly horizontal and rocks can slip many miles along thrust fault. As you can observe in this picture, the hanging wall is towards the right while the foot wall is on the left and the hanging wall has moved up relative to the foot wall. Third type of fault is a strike slip fault. It is also called a dip slip fault where the tip of the fault plane is vertical. <laughs> strike slip fault results from shear stresses. If you stand with one foot on one side and one foot on the other side of a strike slip fault, the block on one side will be moving towards you and the block on the other side will be moving away from you. If the block moving towards you is the block that your right foot is on, the fault is known as a right lateral strike slip fault. If the block moving towards you is the one your left foot is on, the fault is a left lateral strike slip fault. The world's most famous strike slip fault is the San Andreas fault in California, which is a right lateral strike slip fault. Because the San Andreas is a plate boundary, it is also called a transform fault. Most of the world's largest mountains result from compression at convergent plate boundaries. The larger mountain arises when two continental plates smash together. Continental lithosphere is too buoyant to get pushed down into the mantle or the subduct. So when the plates smash together, the crust crumples upwards, causing uplift. The stresses cause folds, reverse folds and thrust folds, all of which allow the crust to grow thicker and rise upwards. In a fold, we can see two types of folds. First is where the limbs of the fold are inclined in opposite direction. Such fold is called an anticline. 
if the limbs of the fold are inclined in the same direction the fold is called a syncline generally we find a series of anticlines and synclines where we have fold mountains you can easily notice the folds seen on the rock here initially folds are symmetrical as the force increases from one side the folds become asymmetrical if it continues and there is enormous force from one side as compared to the other the folds become overturned and eventually recumbent the rocks cannot bend beyond this point hence further compression results into the folds breaking apart along a fault line and creates faults between the folds complex folds are created when there are multiple events of compression from different angles the world's highest mountain range the himalayas is growing from the collision between the indian and the eurasian plate about 80 million years ago about 80 million years ago the indian plate was separated from the eurasian plate by an ocean as the indian plate moved to the northwards the subduction zone formed beneath eurasia the sea floor was subducted and caused the formation of a set of continental arc volcanoes about 40 million years ago the indian plate began to collide with the eurasian plate some of the indian plate was thrust beneath asia and some of the asia was thrust onto india rocks got folded which thickened the crust and formed the mountains in places the old sea floor that was between the two slabs of continental crust have been thrust over the asian continent and are found high in the himalayas this was all for this session in the next session we will explore about earthquakes don't forget to watch thank you